inspired you? How did you end up being who you are? You may have read her compelling poems, her plays rich in content on human rights, but probably never met her or heard her voice. The literature professor teaching at Syracuse University in New York has won several awards, including being honored by the Dar es Salaam University for her Pan-Africanist spirit. She was the first woman dean of the Faculty of Arts and Humanities at the University of Nairobi, a position she held until 1982. I was as well very, very active in the movement that had started with the Ngogis, Ngogi Wamiri and Wathiongo, with the community theater. Professor Michelle's passion was to make the downtrodden aware of their rights. The, the familiar names, um, especially those who um, went into detention, were, lo and behold, the current uh, Chief Justice of Kenya, Willy Mutunga, um, Professor Anyang Nyongo, who is now um, in government, people like uh, Mukaru Nganga, Alamin Mazrui. The 69-year-old professor says all hell broke loose when she was linked to the 1982 abortive coup. The government had a theory that the makers of the coup, both students as well as faculty, were mostly in the arts faculty where I was dean. And before that, I used to face a lot of police harassment, arrests, and so forth. So um, at the time that the coup happened, I was actually at home on medical leave. And she was nicked out of the country by friends. Friends arranged for me to go to London. And then, as I mentioned, the St. Lawrence University heard that I was out there and so they invited me to go to St. Lawrence University and that's where I landed. While in the USA her family was hit by the negative impact of racism against Africans. Then she frantically looked for a way of going back to Africa but not Kenya. And I had a very good offer in Zambia to go as the chair and professor of the English department. But on my, my way to Zambia, I stopped over in London, Britain, where Ngogi Wathiongo was, along with people like Wanjiro Kehoro and, um, you know, um, Kehoro, uh, Wanyere Kehoro, her husband. And they were producing the trial of Dedan Kemathi, which I have co-authored with Ngogi Wathiongo. So I went through there and I stayed on to see the performance. And while I was there, I got a message through the Zamb Zambian embassy that uh, President Moy had intervened in Zambia and had said to the Zambian government that if I ended up there, they would consider it an act of sisterly aggression. So I was denied landing in Zambia. I was stranded in London with two children. Her indomitable spirit redirected her to Zimbabwe. The Mugabe's, uh, Comrade Sally Mugabe, the first wife of um, you know, uh, President Mugabe, was a Pan-Africanist and a fighter with whom I had worked very closely during the uh, st struggle for independence in Zimbabwe. So she invited me to go to Zimbabwe. I interviewed for a job with the University of Zimbabwe and got it. And then later on, my passport ran out. I sent it to Kenya for renewal. It was impounded, so I became stateless. And um, they then gave me an honorary Zimbabwean citizenship. Professor Michere says she later regained her Kenyan citizenship, but with difficulties and humiliation. From Zimbabwe, she went back to the USA. Why not come back to Kenya, get back to Kenya, get a job in Kenya? Why stay in America? Listen, if my own university and my country is not going to employ me, and I have an even bigger job somewhere else, why would I not take it? I take the job. And I tell myself that I will continue with the struggles wherever I am, struggles that are local as well as in support of Kenya. Professor Michere Gidhae Mugo says she visits Kenya four to five times a year, but her intellectual work that inspires respect for humanity is ever present in Kenya, and her Pan-Africanist spirit is felt across Africa. Alex Chamwada, Citizen Live at Nine.